This is my first review of this gorgeous Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and today we're going to be taking our first spin in London and also around here where I live and I'm also going to be trying to answer some of the questions that you sent me so come with me. Actually before we head out to London let me share something with you which is you know kind of been bugging me a little bit not just as a tech reviewer but as a consumer as well and if I was considering to spend a lot of money on a device like this you know I would be wanting to know about not just the nice things about it but about the problems as well. And this is about the new display on the S24 Ultra. This is the S23 Ultra here. I mean, Samsung to me have been for a while, right? The, the king of smartphones displays, they, they are so, so good. But as I will show you in this video here, throughout this video today, I think there's something not quite right here. The colors to me seem a little bit muted on, on this new display. The new display is extremely bright. It's important to tell you this, right? It's one of the best displays I've ever used. It's incredible for watching content. The brightness is just out of this world. But Samsung have got this new anti-reflective coating in here now, which apparently is reducing the glare by 75%. I'm always a little bit skeptical about these numbers. But yes, they have reduced glare. It's undisputed. You can clearly see it's very noticeable that. And I love that. But the colors, especially in the UI elements, do seem a little bit muted. Let me show you. I'm not sure you can see it in the camera, but to me, like the reds are almost like pink. You know, they're, they're really like muted. I'm exaggerating a little bit here, but on my previous uh, Samsung phones, one of the first things that I do is go into advanced mode and reduce the greens and blues. Not by much, just a couple of points, but just because to my taste, they've always been a little bit too saturated. On the S24 Ultra, I actually had to leave the vivid profile, which is what I like, up to the max in the saturation here because I feel like it's just not as vibrant as before. And I know this is probably not what you want to hear any pains for me to say this stuff because, you know, I don't like to point out issues. I know how long things go into development and the production. And these are beautiful devices and expensive products. And it pains me to point out issues, but it's my honest opinion right now on this first review. And at the end of this video, I'll also share a bit of a mini rant, if you like, about these reviews in general. Like, you know, I, as a consumer myself, I'm getting a bit fed up with some of this stuff, but I'll leave that to the end because keeping objective for now on the display, I think is more important to you. And if you're interested in that stuff, you can go later and watch the, the end of the video. I just think that when I look side by side against the S23 Ultra, as you can see here, the colors do seem a little bit more vibrant on the S23 Ultra. From a brightness perspective and the overall feel though, I do think the display on the S24 Ultra is amazing. It's a delight to use. It does feel great to the touch. I personally still like the curved display, just put it out there. I know it's a, almost like a 50-50. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people are indifferent. I'd probably be happy if they kept it, but I do appreciate this more refined design. I think refined is the right word here. It does feel more refined, especially with the titanium here. It does feel premium. When I asked you in my community tab here on YouTube and on Instagram as well and Twitter, what are the things that you wanna know? The majority of you asked me to test a few things. The first one was the cameras, specifically, how the cameras compare against the S23 Ultra. And a lot of you asked me about the experience specifically uh, in social media posting, particularly on Instagram. So starting with that, I thought the posting on Instagram Reels was you know, very smooth, very straightforward. Because I now have two accounts in different languages, I did notice the interface on, on Instagram, on the same mobile phone, on the same version of the software, looked different. So there's something that Instagram seems to do depending on the account. But that aside, the selfie camera, I have to say, is not my favorite camera, to be honest. But here's an example of something that you probably do a lot, like a handheld post. Let me know what you thought, but my impression was that you know, for a social media post, this is more than okay. But when you start to kind of look at the quality of the footage, you know, two things stick out for me, and some of you already pointed this out in the comments as well. One was positive, and two, not so much. So starting with the two negatives, exposure. The sky was overcast that day in London, but we are losing a lot of detail here in the, in the bright areas and we're basically just getting white. You know, it's completely blown out at the back in there. Even the colorful displays in the Piccadilly Circus, I mean, at that time, there was a lot of white anyway, but even when they, they did show a little bit of color in there, you know, it's kind of, yeah, a little bit muted. The second criticism I have on this camera is stabilization. I did have about three coffees by that time. Shout out to the coffee people for keeping me going every day. And the app itself is a little bit awkward, you know, in this mode to have to hold the, the record button. It's really hard to keep it still. But even so, the selfie camera to me just doesn't feel very stable in general. Now, the positive thing about this experience was audio, actually. You know, the quality of audio was 
something that really impressed me in this. This part of London, if you know, it's an extremely loud place with traffic, sirens, hundreds of people around me, and sure, you can pick those sounds up, and it's not completely removed, but it managed, without me doing anything, you know, to do a great job at isolating my voice here and, you know, kind of keep the audio to what's important to, to that recording. But yes, the exposure and stabilization could definitely be better here for me. Not happy with just one test. I did do another side by side here. So you can take a look for yourself in a different location, different audio profile, a much quieter place as well. And with other devices too, so you have a bit of a reference. Another very important aspect of the camera, which you asked me to try as well, was of course the 5X zoom on that much bigger sensor. And whether or not we are losing out by not having that 10X zoom, on a smaller sensor. The first thing I noticed, I haven't watched any of the reviews by the way on this, so I could be completely wrong. So I'm just sharing what I experienced. The first thing I noticed was sharpness. The 10X zoom on the S23 Ultra to me looks ever so slightly sharper. Is it gonna matter to 99 out of my 100 pictures that I take or that you take? From a zoom perspective in particular, definitely not. Now, where it really matters to me, which, and I think probably to you as well, is how good the picture looks. And this is where I think that the new telephoto pictures do look much better. This was already my favorite lens, right? This 10X lens on the S23 Ultra. But having that much bigger sensor seems to be producing better photos. You know, who knew, right? I don't know about you, but that to me matters more. It seems obvious. And based on the comments that I'm getting, this is something that is gonna matter to a lot of people. So that, that's my opinion right now. Of course, things could change, right? But in my first review, this is how I'm seeing it. And to summarize it, I think we are losing a tiny bit of sharpness at 10X. Hopefully you can see in this video here, I'll share the original photos as well, like I always do. But we're losing that sharpness in favor of much better looking photos. In my next video, which I'm already working on, we are gonna see how this compares against the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Pixel as well. But I wanted to share this now with you because I know so many of you asked me this and I know how important that is for you. When we look at the regular photos, kind of the normal photos like that a normal dad like me would take, you know, what the S24 Ultra is producing is amazing. I can already see, and I hope you can see as well, there's a considerable difference here in the colors, in the depth of the shots. I'm really, really impressed here. You know, I wasn't really expecting much to be honest. You know, I was like, how much better can photos get on smartphones? Clearly there was a jump still to be made and they did that. These are all unedited photos that you know, I'm showing here right now. And you can tell, right? The colors on the S24 Ultra just look better, to me anyway, and really closer to how I remember the scenes. I'm not saying the S23 Ultra photos are terrible, not by any means, but we do get a jump in quality here. When it comes to portrait shots, I think that's another kind of very important part of, you know, if you've got kids and pets and things like that, I think they are now top of the pile in comparison with other phones, early days, but right now it feels to me that they are, Samsung are really, really delivering on portrait. I mean, we need a better looking model here, but when you start looking at the detail, you know, whether it was 1X, 2X, it didn't matter too much uh, the distance I was using here, but the background separation is really, really good. I'd like to see a more gradual separation, but it's starting to look so close now to professional camera that most people won't notice those things, right? You, you do need sometimes, you know, proper glass, like a proper lens to, to get that, that effect. But I don't know, with software, with all this AI stuff, we might start to see, you know, a little bit of a more gradual, uh, the fall off, you know, between you and, and the, the background. The iPhone and the Pixel also do a great job here, but I do think Samsung are, are ahead. Now we're gonna see that in the next video. Of course, we'll still struggle with certain objects like, you know, glass and plants. Some people like with lots of hair, I don't have that problem. But for people in general, you know, people's faces, you know, which is what this is for really, it's, close to perfection for me. In good lighting, of course, we're gonna get decent results, right? That's obvious, but how does the S24 Ultra behave when we have poor lighting? Overall, I think the bigger sensor is again, making a huge difference here. I haven't done any astrophotography yet. I'm gonna try that as well. And it's early days, but I can totally see an improvement here again in low light situations. I do wanna test this a lot more though, and you know, have already done some comparisons for my next video which are quite revealing, nothing alarming, so don't worry. But I do hope these examples that I'm showing you here today are, are helping you already. Now, before we move on to video quality, which is something that's quite close to my heart, uh, and AI features as well, and everything else, I wanted to call out a potential problem around durability. I've gone for the titanium violet color, and the very first day, it got scratched. I mean, it's uh, it's not a major scratch. Now, of course, you know, you'll be, I'll be using a case like I always do. There's a few cases that I'm testing already. But on the first day, I was being extremely careful with it. And when it wasn't in my hands like this, 
it was going straight into this beautiful leather case here very soft inner lining this felt you know it's you couldn't get something softer to protect it but maybe it was my wedding ring or perhaps attaching it to a gimbal. Again, all those things have rubber protection and I'm not using, not chucking it in a bag or anything like that. I just don't know how it happened. I do this a lot with other phones, right? The S23 Ultra here, a year on, not a single scratch. I mean, it's lighter, but no scratches in here. Same with the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Pixel. Had it for a few months, no issues whatsoever. After a day to get this on the S24 Ultra is disappointing. Maybe I'm just unlucky. I'll be sharing more of my favorite cases for it as well, but just wanted to put that out there. If you're kind of considering not having a case, maybe you need it. Because to me, you know, I didn't need to go full jerry rig everything style here with, with a hammer and stuff to discover that this back is not the most scratch resistant. Now, when it comes to video quality, this is something that I value a lot. The S23 Ultra was already incredible in, in this aspect. It was very hard to we gon' make it big, I say. Um, we gon' make it big, just so stay in it. Stay in it. Behaved and you know, had they improved on video, and boy, did they improve. In 4K 30, everything looks so good. I loved, you know, how natural the background looks, and also how Samsung seems to be dealing with sharpness here. You know, it's very refreshing to see, you know, a, a video out of a smartphone that is not over sharpened, because it's so easy these days with smartphones to. You know, they think that they have to overdo on sharpness to get very clear like images, uh, which can be great for architecture and objects and products, but not so good for filming people. So I think the balance here is so good. I would say again, almost perfect. To really go a step further, I know I do like using this ND filter, especially in a day like today, it's very bright. They really make a big difference for me. But for most people, you're not gonna need those. I will leave some links to my favorite ones down below, some of the reviews that I did about them as well, but I'm really impressed. But that's not enough. Samsung went a bit further here with the AK video. I did spot an issue with AK though, we'll talk about that in a bit, but the overall quality is insane. It's nothing short of just, yeah. I'm in awe when I'm watching this. I mean, the word is overused, but it is awesome. All these clips that you're seeing here were shot on 8K handheld. And of course, right, the editing software that I use will downscale it to 4K. YouTube will then compress it. But when you watch this natively on the device or on an 8K display, or even on a 4K display, I mean, it's literally jaw dropping that we can do this on a smartphone. I still think this is incredible. The level of detail, the colors, everything. You know, what really surprised me actually here was was a stabilization on 8K. Traditionally, you know, it's been one of those modes that can be quite finicky up to a point where you might think it's a gimmick. We're definitely seeing a huge progression here. It really is incredible. And I know you're probably asking, what was the problem that you mentioned then? Or what did you say that was an issue with 8K? Well, it's to do with the 5X lens. I appreciate that we now have this mode. We didn't have that before. It's nice to have this extra, you know, kind of zoom on the AK. But I noticed this tiny little jitters when recording. It's not just me, the handheld aspect is probably not helping, but it's been doing it quite a bit in, in that mode in, in different scenes. So I will be doing more research and make sure that, you know, I don't have a faulty device or anything like that because I'm that unlucky sometimes. And I'm hoping that if this is a real issue that this can get fixed by software updates, if it feels software-y to me, and Samsung, if you're watching, you know, I'm happy to share the original clips as well. Still a nice day outside. Let's go back out there. From an audio quality perspective, this is the main camera and you can see, you know, it's, there's quite a lot of noise here. There's ducks, there's people walking around and, you know, just wind noise as well. It's not that windy, to be honest, but there's always a little bit that gets picked up. And I'm going to try the same using a uh, professional microphone. We're going to try that now. And this is the audio quality from uh, the microphone that kind of is connected via USB-C and then Bluetooth to the microphone on my shirt here. So, so you can have an idea of the difference uh, in sound. This is using the main camera as well. And of course, uh, the, the sound will sound a little bit different if you use the selfie camera. And uh, yeah, let me know what you thought. But I think the S24 Ultra audio is excellent already. I mean, you could 100% use it without a problem. You know, if you're close to it, no issues. Of course, adding a professional microphone like the Holy Land that I'm using here, you know, has a lot of advantages. The S24 Ultra itself was no slouch, but you're gonna get a lot more. And if you're using the, the phone for content creation, you might wanna consider an external microphone if you are moving around a little bit. Lots more to come on video quality and you don't wanna miss my comparison here with the 15 Pro Max. I got a couple of bombshells on that video. Nothing alarming, but 
you know, you'll be awesome if you subscribe because I think you're gonna enjoy that as well. Actually, if you enjoyed this video right here, please leave a thumbs up as that really helps the channel. It helps me get discovered out there. Even if you think it's a small gesture, it does mean a lot to me. Artificial intelligence features is something else that you wanted me to test. And when we think about it, right, Samsung put a hell of a lot of focus on this. Right now, one of the features that I'm using already a lot is this writing assistant. Holy moly, I mean, this is awesome. I'm always like juggling things throughout my day, right? Messaging people from all sorts of different backgrounds, as well as writing a lot, you know, to deal with different things in my life, right? Sometimes I need to write an Instagram post, which is like a social media, like with hashtags and things like that, lots of emojis. Other times I need to update my clients, you know, completely outside of YouTube in a tech business, but in a more professional way. And other times I could just be chatting to a friend and I love how much time this is already saving me. You know, I can just type the core of the message and let writing assist do the rest for me. And that to me is where AI can really, really help. I mean, I saw some of the stuff in, on the pixel, but not to this level. This is definitely an upgrade here. It's already correcting my grammar. I wish it did that live as I'm talking to you, <laughs> but it's translating things, it's helping me respond to comments in these videos. It's fantastic and definitely definitely not a gimmick circle to search though i'll be honest with you this one is closer to a gimmick but it's not really a gimmick i mean it's it's being useful already and i can see this being very helpful to a lot of people but it feels to me right now like one of those things that you try when the phone is new and you're like oh my god look at this thing right uh, remember cinematic mode on the iphone for example right? oh we've got this but then you you kind of forget it you know it's kind of is there and you never use it. But I feel like this one, when you do need it in future, you will be very pleased that you have it because I tested it out there, just creating some scenarios. It was just the speed at which it did it and the level of information that it generated. It wasn't just a Wikipedia return, right? It was more like relevant to the object or relevant to the place. I think there's a lot of potential there. One thing that's kind of annoying and it's at the back of my mind, and I'm sure at the back of yours as well, is one is by the end of 25, they might start charging people for these features. But there's also the point of, hang on, that doesn't feel like resource intensive. That feels to me like a bit of software that could go on any phone. So I'm thinking, you know, do you really need the S24 Ultra to get those features? Talking of which, generative AI when photo editing, yeah, this is again, definitely not a gimmick. In this example here, removing this person from the photo was an absolute breeze, very, very easy to do. You can do this with your finger, of course, but I find this a perfect use case for the S Pen. It lets you really be precise with your selection, which will help AI in the end, right? The better your selection, the better the result will be at the end. That's been my experience. And just to prove that point, don't get too like overexcited with your selections though, because it's not magic, right? One could argue that a red London bus, like a double-decker bus, is fairly recognizable. But to be fair, I was asking a lot here with multiple selections. I'm sure if I was kind of spending more time being a little bit more patient with my selections and editing bit by bit, you could actually achieve better results here. But yeah, I just thought it was funny that, yeah, see how, how far can we push AI sometimes, right? The bottom line is, this is really impressive and is not a gimmick. Now, one of the things that no one really asked me to, to review, <laughs> but I personally was curious about it, so I thought I'll, I'll review it anyway, is the speakers. I really care about this, right? I watch content a lot on my, on my smartphones. Sometimes I wear earbuds, but most of the time, I'm just holding the phone or I have it propped up somewhere. And I've complained about this before on the S22 Ultra, on pretty much every phone, I complain about the audio quality because to me, they're not as good as the iPhone, for example. The iPhone 14 Pro Max had lots of issues, but sounded better to me than the S22, S23 Ultra. And the same with the 15 Pro Max. I think that right now sounds better than the S23 Ultra. And I know this stuff is subjective, but here's a little side-by-side -side for you. Late November, midsummer, at the end of the world. Patagonia. The southernmost tip of the Americas. Late November, midsummer, at the end of the world. Patagonia, the southernmost tip of the Americas. Let me know what you thought, but I think Samsung finally did it. It sounds better now. It's fuller to me, it's louder, which is not a big achievement. I think it was already louder at 100% although you lost quality back in the, in the S23 Ultra. Now it's louder and it's clearer, fuller, better. I will do a bit more research on this and see if they've actually changed the hardware here, you know, perhaps 
the difference in material is helping, the casing, the glass. There's a lot of changes here, even the cutouts are different, right? So there's a lot, maybe the whole thing is what's making it sound better. And I really appreciate that. Thank you, Samsung. That is one of the things that I wanted to improve. Now, something else that you might care about is gaming. Yes, I played a few games and tested it to see you know, how hot it gets from a gaming performance perspective. You know, is it, is it struggling to do anything? And as you can imagine, right, I've got nothing but praise. It's been awesome. Even the more demanding games here have been extremely smooth to play, no issues. Have I seen any indication of thermal throttling or overheating? Yeah. I mean, I've played these games for so long on so many smartphones. There's definitely a little bit of throttling when it gets a bit warm, but it's more of a, a benchmark thing. You will notice that if you're measuring it, but your eyes won't see, if you know what I mean. The experience when you're playing the game doesn't change. I'm sure there's a level of, of that happening on any phone you know, to keep the temperature stable, but you don't notice any huge drops in FPS or, or any screen dimming like we've seen in other phones in the past. Did it get warm? Hot? Yeah, absolutely but nothing out of the ordinary. You know, after a good hour session of playing Genshin Impact, I don't actually like that game, but you know, it's a good game to test smartphones. I was getting about 40 degrees Celsius after, you know, about a good 40 minutes, 45 minutes, but it never went above that. I've added Game Booster Plus as well and turned that on, but I'm not sure what that's doing and even if it's needed right now. And I do think the phone could even afford to get a little bit warmer if it needs to, maybe a couple of degrees more. So that vapor chamber, whatever it's doing right now, that cooling seems to be doing its job really well and that's nothing short of impressive. I will be testing this a lot more with things like, you know, ray tracing, some examples of more high intensive games, but first impressions, yeah, pretty happy with what I've seen. Thanks for sticking with me and I'll make sure to keep bringing these videos for you in the same way of just me being honest about the tech that I'm reviewing. While you wait for the next one, there's a cool video that I did here about some behind scenes stuff that you might enjoy and lots more of uh, smartphone comparisons and reviews here as well. See you soon. I got my friends in the back of my roller. We gon' make it big one day. We gon' make it big, I say. We gon' make it big, just stay in there. Stay.